Hi, this is Joe Satriani, and uh, I'm still here three months later in the basement of Guitar World. <laughs> no food, nothing, help. Um, but it's funny when you have all this time on your hands and you're locked in a basement uh, in New York City, you start to think about things, uh, about playing, mixing the ethos of jazz and rock uh, and other styles, all of which I grew up listening to, learning how to play with, on top of, and so it's sort of part of my, my foundation. Uh, those are my roots. So when I'm playing, I'm thinking about that. I, I think that uh, in my early days, what um, lost me a lot of gigs was that people were always asking, well, how come you're playing all those other notes? And I thought, well, one day I'll find a gig where people will uh, find out you know, what I'm really about, and maybe I'll get rewarded for playing all those other notes. And uh, it sounds a bit esoteric, but actually it's at the heart of what a lot of musicians, I think, um, ask themselves when they're practicing. Like, wh why am I doing this? What's really my style? What am I trying to say? What's allowed, right? Well, we know that anything is allowed. There are really no rules. Um, it really is how you present it that makes it work or not work. So if you've, you're feeling it, you might as well try it. So. Um, let me make this more practical and just think uh, to myself, if I was just going to uh, get up and start playing, I would probably start loosening up just by playing some melody phrases, solo phrases, and I wouldn't be thinking about context so much. So I'm just going to say A, A-ish right now. I'm just going to start playing. I think I'll start with the neck pickup just because. And I may, I may just go through different keys um, just because I'm getting a sort of a whim all of a sudden to, to try something different. kind of all over the map there in terms of keys, but I was kind of doing some blues stuff. I started with a little, you know, which is, you know, going to the note a fret lower or above the one you really want to play and just sliding up to it. Flat nine up to nine, flat nine down to one, sharp four up to five or down to four. You know, when you put them together, mixing in a little classical, using a little Lydian minor kind of, a little Phrygian dominant when I was doing that, and then some Phrygian scale. Now this kind of stuff would work, let's say if you had what they call a pedal point, you just had one note to play over you basically you've got a the band is giving you a blank canvas and you can sort of change keys at will as you you know uh, melodically sort of paint this picture no one's playing chords behind you the other way that you have to think about this is well what if someone is just giving me a suspended chord then all i really have to think about is make sure that when i do hit a four and hang on to it it goes with this four not this four unless you're looking to really make people feel uncomfortable, like... I can do that, you know? And I might do that on another record. 
somewhere down the road. But keep in mind that when you play notes that are part of the chords, in other words, chords are made up of notes, and those notes are the suggestions. And those suggestions will make people in the audience think that you know what you're doing if you reflect those suggestions. Once you step out, they're gonna say, well, hold on a minute, what are you doing? So then you've gotta sort of take them somewhere. Good, and, and you've gotta resolve it somehow. So that's why I was fooling around with this sort of. As long as you wrap it up, people go, okay, I get it. You're just kind of messing with me a little bit, but in the end, you're going back to the chordal notes that are being presented by the band, the rhythm section around you. Um, this idea of messing around with these other notes really is kind of a jazz thing. It's not a rock and roll thing. Rock and roll's got, I think, uh, a lot more sort of um, rigid rules because you're really focusing maybe 50% on just the attitude of it. And uh, so you don't need to really fill up so much in terms of uh, melody notes. In other words, if you were thinking, well, even though this is a solo, it has a melodic content. It's got some sort of melody requirement. That would be more like thinking like a jazz player. Like, what am I doing to push the envelope to explore? And that's why I would, if I'm just rocking on A, I might really want to go. And right there, I, like I played a couple of scales just sort of off the bat, but that feels natural to me. And I'm, I'm starting on a nine, I'm going down to a six. And then when I come back up here, I use a augmented fourth. Can you hear that? And then back to a four. You can end with a blues phrase. So there's, there's a little bit of the, the jazz thing, a little bit of the modal thing, whatever you want to call that. Uh, and then ending with a, with a, a bluesier kind of a, a phrase or let's say a rock attitude where I'm digging in with that. I kind of mix something from the lesson before where I was playing a major third and a minor third there. Sounds really dangerous there. And then the, using that augmented fourth again. Sounds so normal to me, so I'll just play a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> 